Okay, we're gonna try recording the podcast again. No one knows how much great media we lost, but but if if, if my camera dies, I might just keep rolling because this is not a visual medium. People want to listen to us talk, baby. It's Monday night. You know what that means? You know what that means? We do the podcast on Monday nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's probably the less exciting, except for last Monday night. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, mm. do you know what nervous laughter sounds like? Because I would classify like it as that. that. That boy, whatever did. that was. <laughs> <laughs> that's real laughter. I could change it up. Uh, I had a week. <laughs> I could tell every single time I messaged you, you you said you were still at the office. Rough week. I I don't even have like it's not even like a I had a bad week. Let me tell everybody a funny story about it. It's just I, I didn't have a great week, and I'm and it, it, in my mind, like once we passed like Wednesday, we need a good reason to record the podcast and not just be like it'll be there next week and and for me the reason to delay was um you know the, the gpc was still going on now now we can just talk true, about all true. of it so like i feel GPC. like and then the tiebreakers were going on you know yeah i feel like i did us a favor um by by true. having a really chaotic week sorry for uh ghosting anybody who follows very closely i apologize for not being in discord and telling you what's going on um anywho if you want to join the discord do it if you want to watch the youtube video do it you can see the cap and i look um i don't want to say disheveled but we probably both need a haircut and a beard trim and we both look relatively sunburned um but you know that's your sunburn? I think so. I think we both look a little warm. Maybe, maybe yours is just like the light or the blush. Maybe you're just happy I'm to just, see me. Just, I feel crispy. No, I've got that Native American in my blood. Mm. I've got the red. Mm. Okay. I seeps out, you know. Do too, but uh, that's a story for a different podcast. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we already talked about we your did. family history. Exactly. <laughs> you could go back in that. It's episode before this one sometime. Um <laughs> <laughs> There's a DNA test involved. Um, what? How? How? Did you have a good week? Did, did, did you have a good couple of weeks? What are you up to? I have a good week. Um, so I had a shit week. We established I had a shit week. Yeah. I uh, didn't really have a whole lot going on the last two weeks. Nice, nice, nice. I don't know nice, what. Nice. What did? did uh, I talked about the colonoscopy, right? You did last last episode. Okay. And then, cool. d- dude, That's I... really the only notable thing that happened to me. I didn't really ask your permission about this, uh, but yeah. I told four or five people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I put it on the podcast. I feel like, like because you put it on the podcast, uh, yeah. it, 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 it's like a story that you can tell people. But, like, I was having yeah. dinner. I was having dinner with my mom. We were, we were eating a mole enchiladas, which, if you don't know, is an enchilada that has a, a dark brown sauce to it, and it looked like poop. Okay. And I was thinking about poop. And I'm like, Mom, these enchiladas look like poop. And she's like, Joey, you're almost 30. Shut the fuck up. And I'm like, huh, poop. And then I'm like, oh, speaking of poop. Speaking of poop. <laughs> you know what I'm putting Austin to the podcast with? She's like, what does this story do with poop? He had to have all of his poop out of it. And I told my mom. <laughs> that's that's the extent of it. I told my mom. Well, if you want to continue down that line, uh, there is follow-ups to oh. uh, that, which is... Uh, then I had to take, uh, I, I, got, I cleansed out my body, and then I refilled it again, and then I had to take pieces of it and put it in jars for it to go to the lab. You ever had to do that? I have not had to give a poop sample before. Um, I'm going to give a pee sample in the mail pretty soon, but I've never going to, how do you, I imagine the most effective way to do that is like you put like some saran wrap over the toilet. And then you kind of like poop on like the saran shelf and then you kind of scoop it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's, it's uh, they, they give you a plastic bucket, basically. Like a bucket and that goes in your a, toilet or a bucket a that goes on the floor? Yes, it has, it has a rim that will line up with the, your toilet. Okay. So you shit yeah. in a in a disposable bucket, but still shit in the yes. toilet. And then you have to manipulate your shit. Yes, <laughs> and put it into four different jars. Mm. Let me just say, 
terrible experience. <laughs> I didn't realize that I would not like it as much as I did. <laughs> I was like, this is awful. I thought this was going to be easier. <laughs> like, fill up to the red line. I'm like, okay, I need more and more. Okay, and then they tell you, yeah, you know, close it real tight and then shake it up. And I was just like, oh, Jesus, I really hope I should. I really hope it's all the way closed. You're like a poop artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Um, I hope your insides are okay. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. <laughs> so that's the only really notable thing that happened to me, uh, I think, the last two weeks. I've been playing lots of Gloomhaven. Should I talk about that? So now I've seen, uh, you, you, did, you did a little bit. I, I, I'm, I'm a part of this group chat where invitations keep on going out, and I'm like, guys, I'm busy on Sunday. I have things to do. And then I go, mm, do I really want to play Gloomhaven? Uh, but but, but, but I, I like knowing that it's happening. The, the, yeah, the me, feeling me, of Ellie feeling invited feels great. Me, Ellie, and our friend Charlie are playing regularly, and then it's a four-person game. It goes up to four people, so might as well if anybody wants to play with us. If not, three people is more than fine. But uh, yeah, we've been doing that. It's been uh, it's been pretty fun. Uh, and then I watched the DPC. Uh, <laughs> I watched. Uh, well, I casted it with uh, SVG. So SVG and I have been casting about half of the NA DPC, pretty much in the good matches or the we like all the archive ones, these semi-competitive matches. Uh, yeah, and then I've also been keeping up with Division Two Arkosh specifically. Which spoilers, they got eliminated from Division Two. Really fucking embarrassing. I'm very mad about it. I, 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 Slacks is very mad about it. We're both mad about it together. This is like a, it's like a good coaching moment, right? Like, like what do you do when you're like a when you're someone like Slacks who's like essentially a team owner, and it's like you know, he just has these people. And he's like, well, what what do I do now? Because because now there's like business decisions to be made, right? Uh, I mean, at this point in time, it's just like. Uh, really, as long as they get back into Division 2 through Opens next year, then mm -hmm. no harm, no foul, really. They're going to miss the TI qualifiers. That's just an extra bit of content that they could have had. Uh, but otherwise, kind of, you know, as long as they get back in. Stressful part is, is like, what if they don't get back in? Then the team might be really fucked. Especially since the fact that we uh, don't have an announcement yet, but the announcement of an announcement we got something really cool coming down the fucking pipeline here, I think. And uh, <laughs> we're working on this to make this thing happen. And uh, oof. You need, you need that Division 2 cloud. Really fucking, yeah. So, so is it Dendi's fault? It was so wild of me to tune into the game and watch Dendi playing Pudge on Arkash in Division 2 NA. Like, honestly, for the for the memes alone and, like, the YouTube thumbnail you can make, that might be worth it. But um, the, the results weren't there. But I was I was entertained. I was entertained as a viewer in a Division 2 game. And I'm, I'm not even... I'm not lying. Like, I, I'm not doing a bit. I was entertained watching a Division 2 game. And I think that, that that speaks volumes, right? Yeah, well, I, the, that entertainment is now gone because they got eliminated. So, you know, I didn't... I wasn't very entertained. I was stressed as I'm stressed watching <laughs> all of their matches. But, you know... I, I I told them, I was like, I told them before the match, I was like, all right, you, good luck. I'm not going to watch it. And they're like, why not? I said, you guys are one of the most stressful teams I've ever watched in my fucking life. Because even when they win, nothing they do is clean. So, you know. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Good content. We have a video that's doing twice as well as any other video that's uh, that, that is ever done. It's well over 100,000 views within less than a week. That's really good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, very good. Really great uh, showing a lot of growth in our YouTube channel <laughs> that may now be dead because they're eliminated. <laughs> All I mean, these good things are happening and then they get eliminated at the same time. Uh, to put that into perspective, I can struggle to get numbers like that on like the Liquid Counter-Strike YouTube channel with like a liege. 
<laughs> and nitro, right? So it's been four days and nineteen hours, and we have one hundred seventy-one thousand views on it already. What the? What did you do for the algorithm to serve that one? Do, do, do you think it's like a like like good titling, happy thumbnail? Mm-hmm. Like what is? I, I know I know it's a full collective, but what in particular about that video do you think is making it pop off? Okay, so the the video is them doing the witch doctor Chen strategy. Do you know about this? No. So Chen, um, his uh, penitence increases your attack speed for anybody attacking that unit. Mm -hmm. And it increases it by a lot. Witch Doctor, his ward is affected by penitence. So if you attack, it's it's like a fucking machine gun. It does so much damage so quickly. You should watch the video. I, I like just just to like scroll through and just find one of those moments because it does an insane amount of damage, super fast. Are, are you but, casting it on the witch doctor or onto the ward? Because you can target the ward, right? No, 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 no. You're casting it on an enemy, and then the the death ward needs to target that enemy. Gotcha. And then so, if you have so, an agonim scepter, like you target that enemy, and then it bounces all over the place. So so death ward gets put down. Witch doctor selects the death ward to choose a target. Chen penitence is the target. Witch doctor selects them, and then yeah, like yeah. that, and it just does a shit ton of damage. And they did that strategy. Uh, it was just like they did party queue. Uh, Arkosh did party queue with Dendi. So Dendi's in the title. Uh, the Rizpol, the one who came up with the strategy, his name is also in the title. It's a funny video, it has a good uh, idea to it. It's just all around, like just uh, also in general, the the YouTube has been growing a lot. So that's a win, you know. Yeah, small small silver all, linings, right? Everything that I understand from Jenkins is all algorithm shit. As long as you end up in the YouTube fucking algorithm then it's gonna spit out your video to everybody everybody which is, who does dota in the slightest is gonna get it so which is why there's things that are important like watch time if you're gonna open an arkosh video you better watch that fucking thing all the way through there the, yeah. like if you are now curious about the video because we are talking about it and you haven't seen it motherfucker open it and don't close it till it's done <laughs> Or if it's in your suggested, like if YouTube is trying to prompt you with it on your homepage or something, click on that thing. Fucking mm-hmm. click on it. Mm-hmm. That's the click-through rate. That's important too. Or Maybe if it's on the that, sidebar. Like, but more homepage yeah. is more important than sidebar. But like one of those two, if you see the logo somewhere, click it and then watch it all the way. If you yeah. don't like it, go pee and come back. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> do cap a solid now, he, he needs a win because, because otherwise that fucking YouTube channel is going to be fucking gone just purely off the fact there's no more team anymore anyway so uh, yeah I, okay so those are my Arkosh woes I won't talk about it anymore um, but yeah I watched the rest of Div 1 um, and saw how most of it ended up um, which was pretty interesting uh, obviously, I was talking about casting NA, so we could probably start with that. Did you see what happened in NA? Um, aside from the fact that TSM is not going to the major, TSM is one of like the only teams who are who is currently in the top twelve who's not going to the major. It's like TSM and, and Gaming yeah. Gladiators are like two of twelve teams currently in contention for TI who aren't going. So they're in theory the only ones who can be knocked out of contention without like any like agency over their future but tsm already qualified for sure so really there is like one team who does not have control their own destiny for ti yep they um tsm struggled quite a bit they looked uh pretty weak um na once again ended up in a three-way tiebreaker tsm was not in that tiebreaker um so they weren't even the third best team in NA. They were the fourth best team in NA because Nouns, formerly known as um, Four Wild Zoomers. Four Zoomers? No. Four Zoomers. Okay. Well, Wildcard is an actual organization. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I, 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 am, I am sorry, John Wildcard. Please forgive me. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's probably really upset about that. Uh, so Nouns, formerly known as Four Zoomers, um, that is with Z-Freak and Gunner and Husky, um, they... Um, they boot camped and they looked really good. So they got this new sponsor now and some NFT bullshit. Um, but they ended up getting a boot camp out of it in Philadelphia. 
um, for this season. And it went really well, it seemed like. Um, seemed like they were clicking really well. They were winning all their matches. Um, they beat EG. They were, yeah, they, they beat EG. They lost to uh, Quincy Crew. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they Quincy Crew looked like absolute monsters. They got crushed by Quincy Crew. But they also did Enchantress carry two games in a row. So, you know. Uh, what, what can you say? Uh, but so they were left in a situation where the final day, the final match of the NADPC is EG versus Quincy Crew. And if Quincy Crew wins, Nouns is going to the major because they are six and one. And if Quincy Crew just cleans it up and goes seven and zero, oh, then Nouns gets it gets a trip to the major without having to worry about shit. EG had to be able to win that series and they did they won that series they 2 owed quincy crew they end up in a three-way tiebreaker again for the mm-hmm. nadpc and that three-way tiebreaker immediately went against nouns they played against eg lost immediately eg then played quincy crew they won and uh and then nouns tried to beat quincy crew which they already lost to them before and were not good enough they almost they actually kind of Maybe could have had that game. I really think they uh, the the missing ingredient for them because they they might have been able to beat Quincy Crew. The missing ingredient, honestly, I feel like was that boot camp because they stopped boot camping. They did not keep the boot camp for the tiebreaker, probably because you know you schedule it out and you're just yeah like, money okay, schedule yeah. So I think the last two matches that they played, they played against five rat four staff who weren't really threats, but they lost a game to them anyway. They looked really bad for that series, even though they won. They they didn't look great. And then the tiebreaker, they didn't look great. And uh, I can't help but feeling like if they played it in the, the boot camp environment, they might have been able to go forward and that would have been massive. So. I, Very sad. E.G. Quincy Crew. It, it could have been different. Could have been could different. Have been different. Yeah. I like that there was also a three-way tiebreaker for elimination, which had the opposite effect, where only one team gets out of that. Uh, I was also, I was almost more interested in those games, not because I cared too much about the players, because I wanted to see some real cutthroat Dota. That is actually the perfect fucking look for NA, like three-way tiebreaker at the top three-way tiebreaker at the bottom because it does feel like that it feels like there's only three teams in na most of the time they have been getting more competitive so it feels like five teams but the bottom three are still like real bad no nobody has come in from the lower division to actually make anything look that competitive besides the cut the previous season but they changed the roster so yeah Rough times. Yeah every other league has had like someone come up from division two right and been like oh hey we're like top three eventually after like two years except for na it's just uh i mean the cut did do that but yeah that then they fell down this season they stayed up last season then they fell down this season but yeah it's just uh, the region doesn't have the depth quite to to be able to support that like six team basically there is no like six super competitive team uh do you think tsm Western... is like a sorry do, do, do you think tsm uh missing a major is like to, like their qualifier of ti probably don't care too much about the money like is is this just like hyper training for uh for for ti no like they get a break while everybody is gonna go play in fucking saudi and then arlington and then uh thailand or fucking all over the place right malaysia Malaysia. thailand and then maybe malaysia and then ti like there's there's like four tournaments in the span of like six weeks yeah 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 um I know they're going to Riyadh. I saw the them posting about that, so uh, they're at least going to an event. But yeah, I I doubt they care too much about going. I'm sure they would have been nice Arlington. You know, it's like in your home country or in your home region. Um, but they they still have TI. That's the important thing to focus on. Um, so it's kind of yeah. whatever. The home country thing feels wild because I, I was thinking about it. I was actually getting my. Um tickets for arlington because uh liquid qualified so i you know there's like you know tickets for like you wow. know like staff and people it's fine we can talk about that yeah. later um well you well there hasn't been an event did, did you did you did you have to buy your own tickets no 
Uh, really? No. Because I because I, I've heard that it's, there aren't too many tickets out there for these teams. Uh, so each team gets. I think it's like 10 backstage passes, which is normally like the five team players, a coach, and then like a manager, and then like potentially another coach, and maybe another coach, and like a media person, right? So when you have three coaches, those get taken up pretty quickly. Um, I see, I see. Right. And then there's 10 just event tickets on top of that. So I'm giving mm. my the backstage ticket that I would get to the person who's going to film the vlog with the team, and then I will... Um, have just like a regular event ticket for the three days but i'm gonna be there the whole week and probably find my way in anyways yeah that sounds about yeah. right don't wrap me out you know what's really crazy at events when you have a bunch of backstage passes is that if you just walk out with two then both people can come back in and then suddenly there's more people they're supposed to be in the room and uh, uh that, that was the ti classic right there it's totally fine yeah when has it ever been a problem i, I think valve started getting mad about that at some point which makes sense i mean there were way too many people in the vip areas Oh, it there it was comical at times. It was basically yeah. like, who do you know? Remember, remember Grand Grand being in the player area? And <laughs> got interviewed for his Ice 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 and TI2. Yeah. That was a thing that happened. Man, I'm excited about Arlington because I realized that, you know, the last event that was like in America was TI7. Yeah. It's been 5 years. I mean, Vancouver kind of counts. It's basically, it's basically America, but like, it's been, it's been five years. Sorry. Well, that's but TI-8. TI-8 was Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. So like, maybe it's yeah. been four years if you count Vancouver, years, but like, yeah, yeah, you know, okay. it's been five years. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited to just go. I think tickets mostly sold. I don't know how big the venue is going to be. Um, but like, I'm going to go be there with the team. We'll film some stuff. We'll get some barbecue. Um, Dennis, Ken, myself, the team will all be there. Nice, nice. I will not be there. I won't see you there. That's okay. <laughs> Texas is gonna be super fucking hot. I it's don't gonna suck. That part. <laughs> yeah. At least, it's at least Dallas isn't suck. that humid, so like it won't be like insufferable, insufferable. But like it's gonna, it's gonna not be super fun. Yeah. You know, a sick part of me kind of wants the grid to fail on that. <laughs> <laughs> just to see the chaos that ensues at an esports tournament that doesn't have electricity <laughs> i would like to state for the record that i hope for the people of texas that the grid does not fail and the state of the podcast would like to endorse uh a power equity um that being mm -hmm. said would be funny um <laughs> so right, I, we got I, five I, more regions to cut through I know. I got a ticket to Arlington because the team is going to be there because Western Europe mm -hmm. also had quite a tiebreaker situation. There were there was a tiebreaker for second and third, a tiebreaker for fourth and fifth, a tiebreaker for sixth and seventh. There's, there's three best of threes going on for different lines in the placement, which was tight. And ultimately, um, God, don't punch down, Joey. Alliance didn't win a single game. Um, <laughs> and Goon Squad also <laughs> saw themselves get eliminated. Wait, Alliance? D Wait, didn't Alliance win a single game. got eliminated? Didn't, didn't win a single game? Yeah. Yeah. And Goon Damn. Squad went down with them. But Shame. I was... I mean, Goon Squad won four games. Goons, they uh, won two series. Yeah. They They're... had to go through a tiebreaker. Mm-hmm. They mm -hmm. almost did it. I felt like they were winning that tiebreaker, actually, at one point in time. I thought they were, too. I mean, th they Are were literally because it was 1-0 to start in their favor. Are you talking about Alliance, quote, the worst team in the DPC or something like that? Did what you see you that? The Chinese broadcast put, said Alliance is the worst team in the DPC or something like that. <laughs> Man, if you would read Reddit, you would think I was that like, because Jesus Christ, who writes that? That is insane to write. Yeah, like, someone. <laughs> yeah, like I get it. They didn't win a single game, but like, what the hell? I would like. Let's be real. They can probably beat Felt. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure they can beat some other regions, you know. But so, no surprise, Western Europe was 
uh, super tight. I think the biggest storyline coming from that is, uh, yeah, Tundra, Liquid, OG. Okay, you're probably expecting those teams um, to be going to the Liquid went 4-0 major. Over, over OG to end it out, which was important. <laughs> really needed that to happen. Yeah. Yes, yes, they did. Otherwise, Liquid might have been in a tiebreaker situation for not going to the major. Um, but instead, they were in a tiebreaker for second or third, which is, um, I don't know if it's important to them, actually. Those 100 they, points they actually do kind of matter. Points. Okay. Those 100 they points actually 100 absolutely points. matter. Yeah, and OG didn't need those points, so... Uh, good for liquid um but it was the fourth fifth tiebreaker which was the most important tiebreaker uh i would say because it determines whether you're going to the major or not and it was between entity and team secret um and if you don't really watch that closely entity um is a like kind of new up-and-coming team um filled with like a bunch of newer names yeah. Um, not saying that this is their first team or anything, but these are guys that you would not uh, recognize four years ago. Yeah, Storm Stormer yeah. hasn't like he's been in D one, I guess, but like what on Creep Wave, like yeah, you know, yeah, no, he was. Uh, this is one of those teams that actually got into upper division um, and has managed to stay there. Um, the they also picked up Pure, which seems to be a really big upgrade. For um, for me anyway, it seemed like Entity was a much better team with Pure. Pure seems to be... He's got a play style that's very similar to DeHawk from Bent Boom, and Bent Boom did really well at the Major, so um, I think that actually translated, because the patch hasn't really changed that much since the Major. So he's been playing like, he's like Carry Doom, Carry Leshrac, Sniper, like he's, he's got a whole bunch of weird carry picks that are I usually like the sniper. mid-game-ish. And uh, he's been owning. So, great pickup for them. Big loss for Virtus Pro. Great pickup for Entity. And so. uh, and Secret, who obje- I think you can make the call now, might not have made the right trade because they, they, they took Chrysalis from Entity and then mm-hmm. proceeded to not qualify over them, which is the story here, right? Um, Secret yeah. is pr- probably the favorite to make it out of a European qualifier now for TI maybe just because everybody else will probably make it there on points but even that feels not like a shoe in for them there's a world I wouldn't be surprised if Nigma uh, make it over them I wouldn't be surprised at this point if Entity make it over them yeah and uh, I, I think uh, a winner another winner of this whole situation is Sumail right Sumail um, got out of secret um on Nigma, Nigma will. I mean, we'll just see. They they slaughtered Division Two, but that's expected. So they did lose we'll a game into see. the breach. They they lost uh, they, that. Game. They did. They've got uh, the upcoming LAN events that the that's going to be going around. I believe they're at Riyadh. Uh, they're also at. They were invited to Malaysia, so we're going to see them in international lands, and so then we'll be able to gel, judge. Maybe Secret and Nigma are both losers, um, but. I kind of feel like Nigma's going to show up and look pretty good, um, and that'll put them on a good trajectory for TI qualifiers. Might just end up uh, Puppy versus uh, Kuro for a slot to TI in the first place. We'll see. Yeah. I, I'm interested in how that unfolds, and I think that we're going to see it play out throughout the tournaments that are happening. Uh, so, so maybe Puppy has something up his sleeve. What other regions interested you? Um. Well... I always uh, keep an eye on Southeast Asia is uh, one of the regions I keep a pretty close eye on. It came down to a uh, tiebreaker for first and second between Boom and Talon. I felt moderately comfortable that um, Boom was going to show up because um, Boom, I think they lost to Talon early on in the season. And I remember they didn't just didn't they didn't look quite so good in like the first couple of weeks. But I think ever since then, they just like really turned it up. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like the last couple of weeks that they looked like the boom that I think is a very strong team. Um, so I wasn't too surprised when they won the tiebreaker. They got first. Talon got second. Um, Fnatic managed to get in uh, third. Um, other than I feel like the region mostly broke down as you would expect to. Except T1. for T1 still T1. struggling. 
I mean, like them not being able to get even in a tiebreaker for top three is pretty weird. So they were fifth. Yeah. Like comfortably in fifth. Yeah. Yeah. They lost a more series than they won. So uh, not sure. Not sure what's going on with them. South America so, had a thing happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Beast Coast played their final game of the season against Thunder Awakened without K1 because he was being a bad boy on the internet. Oh, yeah. He, he dropped uh, an Asian racial slur. Yeah. <laughs> um, Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. I mean, Beast Coast is like the most secured team that isn't actually secured. Um, so them having to play without him wasn't really consequential, I think. But um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, yeah, they they lost Coast, first yeah. place potentially. More points for the Thunder Awaken, who I think have the most points out of any team in the DPC. Fun fact: if you would, if you'd be like, "Who's going to be on top of the DPC points before the major?" You're like, "Oh, definitely a South American team." Most people would be like, "What? I don't follow well, them." Well, I mean, Thunder people Awaken. People would believe that if you're like, "Well, of course, Beast Coast get 500 points every single time they get first. The fact that it's not Beast Coast um, who get there. Is I, not that surprising if you've been following South America, but I think it would be surprising for anybody who doesn't watch the region, which I would say the majority of people do not. I mean, it's the region I pay probably the least attention to. It's so. true, but everybody should get on the Picaz train. Choo choo choo, motherfuckers! Hell yeah, I do. I've been preaching. I've been preaching this. I said Picazes is the truth. I, ho- I homie, also homie said could get post. Mr. Magoo is not the truth, but you know, Mr. Magoo's showing up, so. <laughs> he's, he's owning he is owning it's funny how you like run into these players and you think they're like dog shit or something and then like two years later they, they actually are like really fucking good and you're still the same and you're just like what how did, how did they do that <laughs> they probably spent more time playing dota than you or they're a better person uh, they're probably just better than me <laughs> they're probably just better uh but yeah like that's good for i guess I mean, it's not really good for South America because Thunder Awaken was in either way, as was Beast Coast. But uh, there is going to be a third SA team at TI. Um, but that whole situation uh, kind of sets up with a similar situation where it happened. Well, not similar, but uh, China had a big old tiebreaker because at one point in time, everybody was like one and one against each other. Um, so it's not surprising that there was a large amount of parity in uh, China and they had to have a uh, big tiebreaker. And the interesting thing that happened was, so they had a tiebreaker second through fifth. Uh, So a four-way tiebreaker, three slots. Does this this sound familiar at all, Joe? I don't like... (laughs) Is this a little bit of deja vu to Stockholm? (laughs) Okay, well, well, first off, I I want to state for the record that I have purged that from my memory. And also, Mm. man, that tiebreaker would have really changed the whole DPC point situation. It's fine. Mm. Um, Everything is okay. I'm going to go to Singapore. I just hope Aiden is. Um, (laughs) 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 Um... I don't like the way that we format the four-way tiebreakers here in the DPC because essentially it's like best of one GSL groups, right? Best of one double elimination yeah. four-team bracket. Um, it's shit. And I would have preferred I to ask for these to be best of threes all the way through makes the day ve- it makes it from one day to two days. First off, yeah. But, but that's I th- fine. Like, think people I, would be fine with that, right? I mean, ultimately, it's just so the the setup is let me just say that, that i feel like this would never fly in like traditional sports do something for six weeks all for it to like not really matter and all come down to like one day you know like these tiebreakers where there's like a whole bunch of teams and they, they're tiebreakers for whether or not you go to the major or whether or not you get eliminated and like everything that you've done over the last uh six weeks like kind of goes out the bin and it just comes down to a single best of one or a single best of three to determine whether you're in or out. 
You know, it's uh, this is, this, the the way the DPC is set up is is so weird because of the fact that there is only one best of three between each of the teams. Mm -hmm. I, I I almost guarantee if you had two best of threes between between these teams, then um, you would not have these sort of scenarios. I'm I'm almost fine with all of the single best of ones. Maybe you make a longer season and, you know, you actually do a, a double round robin. But really, it's the best sure. of ones in in the tiebreakers that feel super bad to me. I know there's probably people who will be, be like, what about the MLB wild cards or the way that the NBA structured their playoffs in the pandemic era or like other things where it's like, uh, what about the whole NFL playoffs? They're all best of ones. Like, I get it kind of but that's not the game that we play and dota in best of ones except for uh the first stage of the losers bracket at ti which i think is like super fun um is shit <laughs> yeah it's just um it, it's hard i know it's like as a broadcaster you feel it where it just like a lot of times you set up for these matches and like these matches don't really feel like they have um that much weight to them um sometimes because of the fact that you know it's going to end up in tiebreakers or um you know for other regions like na or something it's like okay this is just a clear out class they can't like the the underdog team is going to play one match it gets slaughtered maybe they come back in like two or three weeks and play a second match maybe they could do a bit better because they will have learned but most of the time I, I feel like these uh way these teams that are way out of their league uh, they they're gonna get slaughtered and they don't get a chance at any sort of redemption. So mm -hmm. just like those matchups aren't really uh, aren't really that interesting and stuff. But uh, sorry, we were leading to the Chinese tiebreaker, the second through fifth, and uh, it ended up where uh, PSG LGD ended up forfeiting uh, one of their uh, series because they were already in basically, and they gave. Uh, extreme i believe uh a step up so they, they basically, basically gift him a hundred dpc else. points yeah yeah which is kind of interesting I'm, i mean i get it you don't want to play matches that don't mean anything uh especially if you're a team that's already going to ti and stuff like that and yeah it's good for your region i don't know i like i can't speak to that with confidence and say oh yeah these guys were definitely just you know they just want to help their region do better um, but it does make sense. Even even if you are not like the most pragmatic person in the world would still do something like that because the better your region is, the more slots you get. And you are in your region. You're very likely not going to leave your region. So you want as many teams to go to TI from your region so you get more slots the next year, you know? Were people tinfoil hatting this? Like, no, what, I mean, what, was what, just, like, what was the community was sentiment? Yeah. Um, I think it was just pretty straightforward, honestly. It was just like, okay, PSG LGD is forfeiting against Extreme, giving them a, a free win. PSG LGD doesn't get the points. points. Doesn't matter to them. Yeah. There's no benefit to being number one in the DPC. Yeah, I mean, they were still going to the major, so it was literally just points and uh, just the cup few pennies on the ground uh, that they are too rich to pick up, so... I think and by two, pennies, I mean like a thousand dollars. That too, uh, which is also, you know, I guess good for them. the The things that I think were also interesting about the tiebreakers is that uh, Aster got the job done. Basically, Aster put themselves in a position where if they got second place, if they if they won their two matches, that they would actually vault into uh, the top twelve of points. So mm -hmm. if nothing else changed uh which things will change they they are currently in ti contention so i think that that is probably a strong motivating factor because you only the top eight teams of the event get points you know so there's going to be people who are in the top 12 now who won't get any um yeah i mean i, th I think it's decently likely that nothing changes um because the the way that it's um there are only really one or two teams uh liquid and rng um maybe maybe outside, quincy like, crew if they have like a, a deep run yeah basically if you're looking at uh 
Quincy Crew, um, maybe Outsiders, Extreme, Navi, Talon. Those are all the teams that are still in contention. Um, they would have to uh, place like top six, I believe. Now, the like they they would have to actually do. Uh, I think you lower down the list, you would have to actually place like top four, or top three, top, top which six. Is really rare. Top six is only 500 points, right? So yeah. even if you're extreme gaming, a top six finish is not going to vault you over that like nine. Actually, that would be interesting. What happens if you tie? Because if it's 500 points, they would actually have exact, the exact same number as Aster. What happens if you tie for points? You just have one best at three to determine who gets to take that spot? That'd be wild. It's 515 points. Oh. Wow. If they get top GG. six, they would have more points than Aster. Um, okay. So I any team that gets top six, Extreme, Quincy, Outsiders, RNG, like have a chance, right? Liquid only yeah. need uh, a top eight finish to, to vault into contention. Uh, so yeah. really it depends on like how the teams, the top half of the table are performing versus how the teams in the bottom half of the table are performing. Because if Quincy crew, RNG, Navi like come and then they pop off at this event where, you know, Beast Coast and thunder awaken and boom and eg aren't doing well you can still see a decent amount of shifting and shuffling no team is really safe unless you're you know thunder awaken lgd tsm og um the team like i said earlier that is the most at risk is gaming gladiators because they're not getting any points and there is a very realistic world where all the teams underneath them get the points to push them out Isn't that realistic? If if Boom and EG and Fnatic and Spirit and Aster are all placing in like the top, yeah. They, they, so the you top you listed, yeah. You listed six teams need to place in the top eight. <laughs> Those exact six teams all need to place in the top. I don't know. I feel I feel like oh, I would say I bet we're only going to have one or two teams shift if that. I think uh, two or less are going to shift in the current r ranking system. I do not have faith that there, because there's really only five contenders, I think. I think Navi and Talon are both not too far equipped out. To, to, yeah, they would basically have to be in the grand finals. And the chances of that, I think, are crazy likely. So there's only five teams really up for contention of being able to change the current slot system. So I think um, two or less. I, I think the mo the easiest situation to see happen is Aster not perform and Liquid and RNG make it into top eight. Um, yeah, probably. Spirits don't need to keep playing. Fanatics don't need to keep playing. But if if Spirit doesn't perform either, and Liquid or RNG make it into top eight, they're also out. Mm. So. It, it'll definitely there's there's going to be a lot of great ti building storylines that happen at the major yeah yeah there is um let's see we had eastern europe we talked about outsiders uh they're one of the potential contenders uh outsiders if you don't know is the like former vp sort of lineup um where they've got ramses uh they've got gpk dm um Yamich, they um they actually ended up in a three-way tiebreaker with both Navi and Team Spirit, and they actually managed to take first place, uh, which is really good for them because it gives them a chance, um, mm -hmm. as we were talking about, of being one of those teams to actually um, place top six and get an invite to TI. Um, but the interesting part of that was that um, Navi actually placed second. Team Spirit was actually the loser um, all around. So Team Spirit... Um, very similar to NA, I guess, um, where they had a three-way tiebreaker, but Team Spirit ended up being the the weakest of the three. I don't know if it just didn't really matter to them that much. Uh, it's also best of ones and stuff like that, but it does seem if, to me anyway that Team Spirit, um, they that you know they're still you know a little weak. They're, they're they're not like the dominant TI winners. They haven't come into this season been like we're the big TI winners. But then again, when was the last team that did that? I think that it means 
I think that they actually fucked up by getting third place because even a second place, those extra hundred points would probably make them feel much safer in this conversation of like who can get shifted down or out. Because again, yeah, like true. they are, they are one bad major performance. They are one not making top eight, getting eliminated in groups, getting eliminated in the first round of the lower bracket away from potentially losing their TI spot. Yeah, but then again, they're also TI winners. So I think there's like um, an air of confidence. So like um, SVG was talking to me about this. It's He said like he was saying that like what's the point of going TI if you're just going to get, you know, fucking last or something like that. And I was like, well, no, I mean, like some teams that we were talking about now and specifically, I was like, well, some of these guys have never gone to a TI. So going to a TI first and foremost is like a really big upgrade for their career. It's like it puts them on the map internationally speaking and and like potentially opens up avenues for for better bigger teams even if they don't do well one day you're having uh, a drink but, with puppy out a- after a game and then you don't know what mm-hmm. happens but for a, like a ti winner like team spirit i i would say that like if they're not good enough to like do well at this major or something then like what's the point i guess in some way you know if, if, like, what's the point of going to TI if you're not going to be, like, actually a good contender? Um, um, that might be the case. The money. <laughs> well, they already won a TI. I'm not sure how much more money they need. I mean, do you think they're thinking like that? <laughs> <laughs> or, or are they like, hmm, you know, I could probably, you know, ugh, is it only... Uh, they're Dota players. I really don't think that they're... they're... They probably have families. I feel like Dota players are not, like imaginative enough to be spending all that money almost you know look man they can get they can get a car they can buy mom a house they can they've already done those things um, they won millions and millions of u.s dollars <laughs> as ukrainian and, and russian players you know yeah, that's true that that does go a little bit farther for them <laughs> yeah well a little bit I bet they would still like a little bit more. I'm I'm willing to bet they would still like a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I can I talk about something that I saw while I was watching these DPC games that that is relatively new that um I also saw people complaining about on Reddit. Yeah, what's up? The fucks up with this Zeus change, man. What do you mean? Making him hop all over the place. Yeah, what's wrong? What's wrong with that? I feel like, you know, okay, so Zeus is a hero concept where, like, you know, he deals a bunch of damage and that's his thing, right? But he's, like, super immobile and, like, he's slow and he doesn't have any escape and all he does is fucking nuke you. But now all of a sudden you make him go pop, pop, pop like a fucking pogo stick man and, like, the character loses identity. I'm I'm a Reddit comment. That, that I, I was doing I, the voice of a Reddit comment. <laughs> I have been playing so much for position Zeus. I have been all over that. I was I was an early adopter. Let me just say it netted some fucking profits, baby. I got some MMR out of that, Zeus. I just kept spamming it and spamming it and I won so many games and it's so fun. That's the thing. It's like I usually there it, it is pretty rare for me to like really spam a hero over and over again. I think I'm doing it more. Uh, as I get older, because because I'm just like, if a hero's fun, I'm just like, whatever, I'm just going to keep doing it. Like, if I'm having fun, which is rare in Dota, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> so, and, and like Zeus, like when it's good and it's super fun to play, it's it's like crack, you know? I, I just keep doing it. So, uh, I have What no about it makes it good? Just jumping. What, uh, what have you okay. learned? So, this hero has... Um, has always been pretty immobile and now you've got one of the best mobility like spells in the game this jump goes pretty far uh you do this slow it's an extra nuke um his shard is also crazy good which is the percentage based damage seven percent so like uh he he just shits out damage like he always does but now he has an additional disable which is really important. Like before he had this mini stun, but now he's also got this slow that he does. Um, and you didn't really have anywhere to, to place him um, because if he's mid lane, he suffers the same exact fate of every other glass cannon mid laner right now or and right now for the last like four or five years. Like these heroes like SF, Sniper, Zeus, 
tinker like they they you know will occasionally get strong enough to be like meta for a little bit but they don't stay very long why because they're just glass cannon mid heroes that like if you get on top of them they're just gonna fall over and die well, now zeus is incredibly hard to gank you can't actually gank him in the mid lane most of the time because his his uh, mobility is off the charts. And he actually makes a crazy good support when you give him a little bit of mobility because he trades super effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's uh hero just feels really good, really, really good, really, really fun. Um, you can be kind of sometimes a little useless in lane depending on the matchups, but most of the time your laning is like pretty decent and then you're going to go into the mid to late game and just do shit tons of damage and feel really good about yourself. What's like your standard item build up for everybody who wants to go fuck with Zeus? Uh, that, that's another thing is that you can uh, change the, the item builds a decent amount. I think you get shard relatively quickly. Um, not necessarily at 15 minutes, but if there's a lot of strength heroes, get it right away. If there's not, you can kind of delay it a little bit. Um, I think Kaya is a really nice upgrade. Um, you can go Ether Lens. I found most of the time the extra mobility, the extra range is not necessary because the mobility that you have. Hmm. Um, so if I actually found Ether Lens, I really don't need to build it anymore. Uh, I just try and focus on damage. So Kaya, I still go Aghanim Scepter. Um, just like the Aghanim Scepter, Shard, Kaya, those three items are like the the holy trinity, I guess. Go, you're going to go one of those first. It just depends on what your opponent is, right? So if they have like slippery heroes or you've got really good synergy uh, for the Aghanim Scepter to work, then throw out the Ags, you know, get some global midi stun and uh, screw over some like Puck hero or something like that. Um, if you have a bunch of strength heroes on the enemy team, rush a shard, get it right away. Um, and then otherwise, you know, go Kaya because it's uh, a hero that shits out damage, shits out even more damage. Pretty good. That sounds fun and annoying. Yeah. Go zero <laughs> four four. Don't go your Q. Uh, if you're playing support, if you're playing core, go four zero four. Always max out heavenly jump. There was a Reddit uh, thread about the difference uh, in win rates when a Zeus maxes out his heavenly jump as a as like the secondary skill mm -hmm. rather in or just leaving it as a value point. And it's actually your win rate goes up a lot more when you max out heavenly jump. Um, so don't leave it as a value point. Don't go four four one. Don't what what is scaling with Heavenly Jump? Is Does the range the scale? The slow lasts longer, the cooldown goes down a lot. And right. that, that part is really important. When you get to max out cooldown, you have feel like you have the leap constantly. Um, and you can usually use it at least twice in a fight. Uh, I, there are so many times where it'll net me an extra kill because I'll hold on to the mobility to make sure the fight doesn't go against me in some way, use it defensively if I have to, and, but then by the time the fight's over, like I can use it again to catch a hero that's trying to run away. Mm. So the range also increases on the shock. The shock slows for longer. There's a, it's, it does a lot of different small things, and they all add up. The cooldown is probably the most important. Do you think that uh, Zeus in its current form is going to make it to TI? Uh, or is it going to hit but... ner nerf bat to the point where it's like I, I, not... I, I, I bet you, you're going to get a little bit of nerf, but I, I think that the mobility, just adding to the toolkit is incredibly powerful for Zeus. I mean, have I, have I had that discussion about like why Zeus needed that ability added to him? No. Okay. Uh, let's compare it to another broken hero of this patch. A hero that has an even better mobility spell than Heavenly Jump. Her name is Marcy. Have, have I had the Marcy rant with you about all the tools that she has? All of them. I know that she has basically all of them. <laughs> yes. She has, she has almost all of them. Uh, I think, like, she doesn't have, like... I think she even has silence from like her talent or, or Aghanim Scepter. I think level 25 talent has a silence. She has magic immunity. There's something that she doesn't have. Oh, she doesn't have a break mechanic. Shucks. <laughs> it's like, but like she has everything else in the world, right? 
And if you put in these heroes that have quite literally over 10 different tools of stun, silences, slows, mobility things, yada, yada, yada. How can a hero like Zeus, who all he does is put out damage, and it, like technically his toolkit is damage, mini stun, global damage, I guess you could say. And Scouting. And then reveal, like th that's kind of- Dewarding, like, yeah. I yeah. mean, dewarding is really powerful, but like, the like his toolkit is really not that immense right but then you give it an agonim scepter all of a sudden okay it's not one mini stun it's two and it's also global you give him the shard boom he gets a mobility he gets a mo he gets a mobility spell so he's harder to, to catch and he also uh gets a slow another crowd control measure that's really good so you know like the toolkit he just like increased his tools by 50% with like one ability being added, right? Because his toolkit was already so small. How, but like, how is he supposed to, without that heavenly jump, compete with a hero like Marcy? When would you ever pick Zeus over Marcy when Marcy can do like, n maybe not as good of a job as the, the one thing you do, which is damage, but you can do 10 other things. You know, like you're the fucking Swiss army knife and all like so many Dota heroes have become like that with Aghanim scepters and talents and shards being added to the game. And generally new, the new heroes all have immense uh, toolkits. Dawnbreaker, I mean, Underlord, Void Spirit, Dawnbreaker. They, they all have like mobility spells. They all have stuns and slows and like they, they all have like a bunch of fun to use activatable abilities, but it does uh, point to the power progression in dota where like every hero needs to be able to have a certain number of tools otherwise you just can't compete to anybody else you know and some heroes are doing just fine with their smaller toolkits like i don't know razor but but zeus and others could just use the help because there's been like it, like whatever you would call power creep for toolkit there, there, there's like toolkit creep yeah yeah basically i mean uh like i'll give you another example um nature's prophet nature's prophet has a bunch of really unique tools to him right always has he can summon units uh which is somewhat unique uh and he also has a global teleport that part's super super good but what does he not have any fucking stun right he doesn't have a fucking stun at all and his uh his his quote unquote like disable was one of the easiest things to get out of in life. You have a Quelling Blade, a four Staff, whatever. Easy town. But what do they do? All of a sudden, the Sprout. Now, it, uh, now when you have the Shard, you cut down one of those trees, and oh, there's a big tree walking your way. Now you can't get out of that Sprout unless you have a Quelling Blade and Phase Boots. Okay, that's kind of weird, but all right. Oh, it's now he Dota. has this 20 talent. It's a BKB Piercing in Snare. You, you actually try and TP out, BKB TP out, and Sprout stops you. All of a sudden, it becomes one of the most powerful disables in the game, rather than one of the weakest, you know? And that, that is thanks to progression and talents and stuff like that. So, it, it, you know, like, that's a great example of a hero that whose job was, like, relatively, like, straightforward but unique. And then this power creep of, like, the tools that you get all of a sudden become exponentially stronger, and all of a sudden he's, like... The, like one of the best carries you could could run in, in like that last major you know so are there to like take this to its logical conclusion for your hypothesis um mm -hmm. i i think that we would be seeing additional heroes who could have been in a similar position to, to zeus get additional toolkit items somehow to try and bring their level up is there anybody who comes to mind to you that was like on that tier of Zeus who could use the toolkit benefit who we might see like either ags changes to or ability changes to or just changes changes to um okay so I have to think about this but like one of the first heroes I thought of was Spectre um you know but Spectre they gave her an Aghanim Scepter so she no longer has this big haunt now she has a little haunt so now she has like constant global abilities uh -huh. um and that that global ability also uh, applies the disable it applies the dagger to you so you're slowed all right um so what are some good examples of heroes like that 
Um, I, I I think they 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 fixed like some dazzle stuff. I'm seeing we're seeing more dazzle and have been, but like dazzle was pretty toolkit limited for a while. Yeah, I mean healing supports uh, are really big right now. So dazzle uh, warlock is like first Venge? pick in China. Viper. Um, I was gonna say Venge. Venge is probably one of the more straightforward heroes, right? Once upon a time, she had a single target stun and a swap. And then she just provided damage in some ways, either minus armor or from her aura. Um, but nowadays, like, they gave her this Aghanim Scepter, which is super unique, right? Like, where you die and you become an illusion, you can still use spells. And then the recent one is they gave her the Shard. So now it's not just a single target stun, it's a... Uh, two person stun so you hit that person then it bounces to another person and hey it can it can hit units like that you don't see i think it hits units like out of fog and and shit like that so um like they like there's what these shards and agonims and the thing is is like when you add shards and agonim scepters like you don't want them to be boring they need to be cool so they have and to fun. have it's some a game. Sort of effect like that yeah it's it's fun it's a game so um yeah, so it just means that like all heroes that are uh, one dimensional in some regard like that need to be able to get like some sort of buff up. You think you think Sven falls in that category? Uh, yeah, Sven was pretty pretty straightforward. Yeah, um, currently people are kind of using him for his shard because of how much armor it gives. He does like Warcry, and then he also has his shard. It's like twenty-seven armor, I think. Um, when I was hanging out, uh, it's pretty interesting. When I was hanging out with BSJ at the uh, Europe facility when the when the patch yeah. dropped it before the season. He was telling me he's like Joey. Joey Sven is gonna be a hero. <laughs> I don't know why he sounds like Richard Nixon to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Because because someone in my chat said the smartest thing that I've ever heard them say, which is um you know BKB and 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 God's fury, wrath, senult strength, <laughs> strength. Yes. Fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. They yeah. have the same cooldown, so you could use them together in a tandem. Um, and I'm still waiting for that to happen. But I have <laughs> seen cool. people play. I have seen people play, be like starting to play spend a little bit. Brian is sometimes so smart. Sometimes he's so dumb. <laughs> I can't tell which one that is. I can't tell which one that I feel like it's dumb, but you know, <laughs> uh, who knows? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. He was like, Yeah, it's gonna be Sven. It's gonna be Jug. Jug, Jug, great. Jug can heal himself. Self change, fucking huge. Yeah, uh, I think uh, that's why healing supports are, are really big right now. Um, same same reason, right? The self change went away. Also because poison some touch other is fucking I mean, broken. Husk, Huskar is relatively one dimensional, right? He just like he just fucking runs it, he charges at you and, and right clicks you. But then they gave him an Agatim Scepter that taunts, so like that's another tool that they gave him. They also made his Q disarm. Does this like AoE thing where he disarms people. Yeah, everybody everybody's gonna have a lot of tools. Everybody's gonna have a lot of tools nowadays. There's one more here I want to touch so, uh, on before we before we kick it over to some questions and and, and wrap out. Um, do do you think Pudge is going to live in its current form post the major? Um, are you like know, a, Pudge are you pretty, a Pudge fan he, right now? Because it seems really Pudge weird. Is pretty to me. silly. Yeah, he's. I think he he is good. You know, Pudge Pudge is definitely good. He probably could use a, a slight nerf. I mean, his damage block is like super unique because I think it goes after reductions, whereas most damage block happens before reductions. Mm -hmm. I actually think a sleepy hero of this patch uh, is Axe. I was playing it today, and uh, that the battle hunger change, there are some things you can do with that where you start feeling pretty damn good. Uh, the change was that battle hunger um, gets more damage. It's physical damage. And it's based off of your armor. You get more damage if you have more armor. And so you can do builds. I was experimenting like phase armlet and stuff like that. And my battle hunger armlet axe. was looking really good. And and then I'm just like, okay, so I'm going to go BKB next. And then I'm going to go in AC. And like in the process of amping up my battle hunger damage, I was just becoming a right click hero. And with the shard, it's kind of hard for people to right click you. Uh like man fight you because you reduce their damage when you spin on them and it stacks 
So if you have the longevity, you could just go and fight people and they just stop doing damage and your battle hunger is doing lots of damage. <laughs> so I actually think that hero is actually totally, totally, uh, completely underutilized in this current patch. And I think he, he's a sleeper. I kinda, I'm feeling him. I could tell he's strong. We're going to have this conversation around TI time, and you're going to be like, remember when I told you? Remember when I told you? Remember when I told you? And I'll be like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, Axe is always yeah, one of my favorite heroes to up. play. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think it's weird that as soon as Pudge for the first time in like a decade has been truly like competitively viable, everybody stops and goes, wait a second hold on like like this is the one hero that is truly not allowed to have any time in the limelight for some reason because you can name me any hero and like we can we can point to a time in dota where it's like oh yeah that, that that's like a that's like a tier one picker ban like basically yep. every hero with the exception of pudge <laughs> techies no techies with a ti w techies, except for pudge i mean yeah techies, Tech, techies one ti i mean i mean pudge also had his like chen shit going on in the previous TIs. But that, that was you like, know, you know, he, he was not a was solo jank. act. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was a janky thing. You're right. Uh yeah. Um and, and I think it's part of the reason why he's actually so strong. Because people were so loath to say he was an okay hero. Um that he got maybe over over buffed. I don't think he I, I still felt like he was still weak um with the previous flesh heap numbers. But they could probably scale down the current flesh heap numbers a, a, a tad bit. The thing is, is if I'm right about the damage block uh, after reduction, that sort of thing is very finicky, right? Because obviously damage block um, after damage reduction is incredibly powerful. So it's very easy, I think, for those numbers. I think it went from 20 to 28 at level 4. And all of a sudden, Pudge felt like really good, I you think. You can't kill him. So. You can't kill a punch lot of flesh. You can't kill him. Yeah. Can't kill him. Plus, he has a 15 talent that gives him spell life steal with his Aghanim Scepter, which is crazy good. Yeah. I think you, right now, you just go Vanguard or Hood. Uh, or even cooler, you could go Vanguard and then disassemble it uh, when the Vanguard starts becoming weaker and use the uh, Ring of Health to make a Hood um, and uh, just rush Aghanim Scepter. Get 15 as quick as possible. Yeah. Silly hero. <laughs> Blockwork. That's another hero that was actually kind of straightforward. Um, and, and what's funny is, is that um, part of the reason Pudge is so strong right now is because he can farm neutrals, right? Um, he can just pop his flesh sheep and rot on neutrals. And it's it's actually like opens up a whole new round uh, a way of farming for this Pudge who previously really suffered Slow. doing it. At best, you would like dismember a hard camp creep to heal yourself while rotting, um, but that was like that was still kind of dependent on just your rot and or, or just your dismember timing. But now you could just flush heap and rot anywhere on any camp, and you're feeling pretty good. Uh, Clockwork is another hero that received one of those changes. It was uh, Battery Assault does more damage to creeps. So now, like, Clockwork actually has a little bit of farming mechanisms, you know? So um, another example of, like, heroes just need to be given more tools. Centaur is the hero. That's it. I figured it out. Centaur is the hero that needs to give, be given another tool. He doesn't have enough tools. It took us a minute to get there, but I'm gl I, I, the the light in your eye when you thought about it made yeah. made the whole journey worth it. Yeah, think about think about like what Centaur does right now. Like how how does he his in his current toolkit compete? Like maybe he'll get over buffed and like some of his numbers will be too strong. But if those are num that that is a number relevancy, right? When your numbers get too high, you're in the meta because okay, your your numbers are too high. You're broken. That's 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 cheating. But your toolkit, <laughs> your toolkit is what allows you to remain relevant throughout metas. No matter what your numbers are, your toolkit is good. And I think Centaur's toolkit kind of sucks right now. I mean, what is he? He's a blink stun. He's a blink stun that you don't want to single target during a fight who can make your boys faster and yeah, like can, has can, damage reduction. 
I can link you a, a billion Blink stunners, you know, and they probably all have more expansive toolkits than than Centaur. His cool thing is he has got a global movement speed thing, but that you see, once upon a time, maybe that was enough. But nowadays, it's it's not enough anymore. Not enough. I don't even. What is what does the Ag Shark do? It uh, I know it works on double edge. It, it's double edge. You keep on getting strength when you double edge. It's pretty cool. It like does feel good to 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 be able to do it. But um, I wouldn't really call that like a tool per se. It's, it's like not, a nice self buff, but it doesn't really. It just makes double edge stronger. Most situations, yeah, yeah. And then I guess you know the ags is good for damage reduction. But you need the ags for the additional skill. Yeah. Like the Aghanim Scepter is a great example of, of just a, a numbers thing, right? It's like when that number is like 40, 45%, Aghanim Scepter Centaur is like crazy good meta. It's 30%. Well, then there goes Centaur. And Suns fan somewhere cries just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of crying. I am not crying nor sad because we have so many friends uh, who decide that listening to us is worth giving us money, which I'm not going to tell you to stop doing that because that would just be a bad business decision. But like, why? Um, <laughs> and some of them ask us questions over on patreon.com slash side poll, which we'd like to end episodes with. And if I just keep talking for a little bit longer, you're going to have one I'm pulled up. I always have it. I'm always ready to go. Quick fingers. All right. Uh, Kenneth Alvord, AKA Gimpy Joe. If Joey takes a carton of eggs of six eggs and makes a platter of deviled eggs for a barbecue, how many deviled eggs are left if cat eats three is he asking a word problem like we're in math class it's like a, a word and it's a word and math problem because i think i know the it's a trick question can, what do you think the answer is can 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 i can i confess something yeah do you not know what a deviled egg is no, I'm great at, 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 at word problems. Uh, that's not the confession, though. I don't like eggs very much. Okay. The only time that I, like, really am okay eating eggs is when they're scrambled, because I'm a child, and preferably mm -hmm. with some hot sauce, or if they're in a breakfast burrito. I don't want a deviled egg. I don't I don't want a hard-boiled egg. I, 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 I don't want, like a, like, a poached egg, like an Eggs Benny. I, the idea of, like, an egg on a burger that has a runny yolk. I think it's, it's the runny yolk that's kind of gross to me. Not a fan of that. Like my 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 egg, what is acceptable is like super minimal. I do like those egg souffles from uh from Starbucks, but that's like a it's like a side thing. Um, You're stalling. What's the answer to the question, Joey? I I, I thought I was just I thought I was just sharing. Maybe other people don't like eggs and they can identify with me. Um, does it t is is the question tricky because it takes more than one egg to make a deviled egg? No. No. No, not exactly. Um. Okay. So if, if there's a carton of six eggs and you make deviled eggs out of those six eggs, deviled eggs are cut in half, so you have 12. And yeah. then you have three or something like that, so yeah. I should have nine deviled eggs left. Correct. It was simply the fact that the one, one egg creates two deviled eggs. Okay. That's all. Okay. I, I think. do. I do, I think that's right. The thing is, that yeah. there, there wasn't I mean, like I an think answer. Your instant to... reaction would be like eggs and eats three. Then there's three eggs left. But you know, you I, can. I think the, the 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 trick question is the fact that deviled eggs are cut in half. You can't fool us, Joe. Yeah, got him. Uh, one more. We want to do a second one since <laughs> yeah, we missed one. Yeah, yeah, let's do one more. <laughs> Kaido Reeman. I swear to God, one of these times, the one of these names is going to be one of those Ben Dover. It's I, okay. I can I can feel it. I I thought maybe Kaido <laughs> Riemann was one of those. I was like Kaido. Okay. Uh, if you could use any Dota item in real life, but you can only use it once in twenty four hours, which one would it be? 
This is a this is a classic car ride conversation when you're in a car with a bunch of Dota players or Dota personalities. What hero spell would you use? Um, yes. It's yeah. always teleport. Yeah. Um, it's always teleport. <laughs> it should always it's be teleport. It's always teleport. So it's the same with items. It's boots of travel. Do, okay. Do you think... Hypothetical here. Do you mm -hmm. think that, like, your lifespan can be attributed to, like, a health bar? Because if so, I would maybe make the taste for satanic. What, you just start slaughtering once a day, other people once to a day, increase your life? Once a day, I could pop it and then get healthier. That's that's not how that works, though. You have to do damage to other people. Uh, or things you must right? kill others so that you can live joey i don't i don't think it's i don't think it's supposed to be people necessarily oh wait you're gonna go hit some neutral creeps you just gonna go find some animals as opposed in the forest if, if the is answer that you're is saying? that or to go to a jungle find a, a panther and punch it in the face if the answer is that or people then Yes. <laughs> I mean, one is way more endangered than the other, Joey. That's fucked up. What if... Um, <laughs> I'm not we gonna, can use it with a few less people I'm not and a gonna few yes more and panthers. That. So I'm, I'm just saying that. I'm not going to yes and that. Just I'll gonna, yes and myself. Don't worry. <laughs> keep powering through. Um, All right, so maybe, get rid of minus boots of travel, like the obvious ones. No minus, no boots of travel, no blink dagger. Pirate hat? I can I could dig for gold every <laughs> That's day. That's the same concept. It's okay. the same concept. Okay. Okay. Um, no, we we got to come up with something unique. Um I mean, I keep on thinking of Necronomicon and how funny it would be to just to summon little demons. Especially if they only last for like 60 seconds. To do my bidding. Yeah. <laughs> um At BKB, you can do the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia line. I am a golden god, and you just turn golden. You just get bigger in gold for nine seconds. I feel like a lot of people are probably screaming Shadow Blade. Nah, I, I, that's some pervert shit. <laughs> I, I, I think Shadow Blade and Ninja Gear are probably like two that are like high on people's list. Perverts. What they want is shadow amulet. <laughs> they, but they have to stand perfectly still. Yeah, um, but then it lasts longer and they could just peeve on anybody they want. Do you think I could, like, somehow spin, like, a fourth staff or a Yule Scepter into, like, a business? Like, if I could use a fourth staff once a day, what is the most effective way to use that to make money for me? <laughs> There has to be an answer to that. What could what could you push around just a little bit every day? Like like maybe one of those tunnel boring machines. You just 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 kick it forward. <laughs> like you do like you dig tunnels faster. Um, uh, no, it's got to be something like in order to really get the value out of it. It's got to be something that's like really heavy, right? Yeah. Or is there any way that moving? people could ever get you paid like i'm just literally thinking about moving security cards out of the way of a vault and the, like <laughs> none of that makes sense um final answer orchid sumo wrestling there it is easy got it <laughs> i love hurricane pike that sumo Re wait not hurricane pike i guess four staff, staff and you just dodge because they're facing you, so they're gonna go. They're gonna run you over. So you don't. But you got you got to dodge as you force staff them, and they go past you outside of the circle. Or think of like how mischievous I could be if I was like betting on NASCAR races. Mm. It's just like boom, force staff. Just 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 push one of them just a little bit, and because a crash. That seems that seems bad. But foot races might be better. Shorter distance. Yeah, like hundred meter so dash. The push is more and more effective. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, with an orchid, I can probably like make someone shut the fuck it's up. Silent. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, like, I'm done with you. Up. 
Shut up now. That's going to be my new answer, actually. Global silence whenever that, that <laughs> question gets asked. Silencer. I will fucking make everybody shut up. Shut up. <laughs>